Hello, everyone. We will start with the workshop. Uh, please let me know if something goes wrong, if you can't hear me or anything. So I will start. Um, I will share the screen now. Just a moment. Okay. So welcome everybody to our four day workshop on architecture and interior design. Today is second day. It is a small group of you. I'm happy that you came. Um, my name is Moitza Valant. I uh, work at Adria Beam um, Group. We together organize workshops for software educations for architects, designers, and engineers. Um, if you wanna check the company at this day and Adria Beam Group, you can check out the website following these links. Um, so, as said yesterday, the topic of our uh, workshop is architecture and interior design in Arshlan XP software. Um, what you can do, you can just watch, listen, take a note, ask a question, or for, follow along with uh, opening the Arshline and try the software during the workshop. And also, you can work after the workshop. I will send you homework. I will send you homework. Um, also today I will show you the video how homework can be done. So you will get instructions in text and in video. And when you do the homework, you can ask me questions if you have issues. So also all the webinars will be sent to you after the workshop. Um, the last day, the Thursday will be the exam day. So you will get um, small exam and if you if you um, do it correctly you will get the certificate to the completed workshop also i forgot to tell you yesterday if you uh, you applied to this workshop you got two month free license key and all the students have um, the right to get uh, their free student license key so you can send me your student certificate and you will get your um, student license key. And if you have any feedback, any specific topic that you wanna talk about, uh, you can send me email and I will let you know about that. And if you, if you have any problems with installation or anything with the software, please let me know on my email. So um, what is our four day agenda again? Um, yesterday we talked about living room and architecture basics. Today we have a bathroom design and kitchen design. Tomorrow we will talk about documentation in the program. And the last day we will talk about lights and rendering. So today we have two webinars coming up. Um, we will first see the bathroom design. And here we will actually open a project that is already done. So furniture is already in this uh, room. We will put tiling in it because it is very useful and easy to use too. You can, we can tile in 3D or in 2D, we will see it. And how to create a mirror on the surface. Then we will do also wall elevations and documentations. And when we will finish the work, the, this webinar, I will show you how to do your homework. And then we will go to a second webinar, uh, kitchen design, where we will see how to create kitchen with useful tool KBB, uh, where we can create cabinets. So also I will show you how, um, how you can create easily and very fast with auto layouts um, a kitchen. So this is already the homework. I will now share. 
I will now share webinar. First, we get to bathroom design. Okay. In following videos, we will learn about bathroom tiling in Auckland XP through a real project. First, open the project. After downloading from our website and installing the workshop project, you can find it in the Arcline XP Draw Workshop Preliminary folder. This project does not have any ties. The fastest and easiest tiling method is tiling in 3D and we will use it too now. First, activate the 3D window and right-click on one of the bare walls. From the local menu Tiling, Tiling on Wall Side, select the All Walls option. After that, you have to select the tiles. You can find the desired tiles in the Material Library in the Indoor Tiles folder. In the dialog, set the orientation of the tiles to the Rotate Left option. Let's tie the floor as well. Right-click on the bare floor and from the local menu select Tiling and Tiling Full Area option. Select the tiles in the dialog, which can be found in the same folder as the tiles we use for the walls in the Indoor Tiles folder. Before the program places the tiles, you should set the reference point and with the second point set the angle of rotation. The next step is to add a column with decor ties to the wall behind the toilet. Using the blue arrows found on the status bar at the bottom of the interface, navigate through the already set perspective views until you got a right side to the mentioned wall. Right-click on one of the tiles in the middle and from the tiling menu select the Change Selected Tiles option. Then select the tiles you would like to modify. When you are ready, hit Enter and from the dialog select the desired tiles from the material library. As you have seen it with the 3D tiling tool, you can tile bathroom fast and easily. However, there is an opportunity to place more complicated styles. To do so, you need to create one first. On the interior tab of the ribbon bar, select Properties and Tiling. In the appearing dialog, you can create the new style from rows, setting its height, the tiles and the color of the tile grout. Knowing the dimensions of the tile, you can easily calculate the heights of the rows considering the number of tiles you want to place in a given row. The first row starts from 0 and goes up to 750 mm. Select the tile from the material library and set its orientation. The material of the grout is the same color as the wall painting, white. If you can't find it, use the search field at the top of the dialog. When you are ready with the first row, use the Insert New button to create a copy of the row and set its properties as well. The height of the second row is 250 mm. The third row is 750 mm high again, so select the first row and copy that one so you don't have to set the height again, only the tile. The fourth row is a thin decor stripe, which is 60 mm high.
The penultimate row is 500 mm high, but because we will use the same dial as in the third row, copy that one and only set the height. Deliberately give the last row a higher height value than the inner height of the bathroom because we will turn off the visibility of the tiles, so the tiling will go up to 2310 mm, which is the height of the top of the door, and above that we will have the painting. If in the preview window you do not see the right representation, click on the redraw button. As a last step, you need to save the new tiling style so you will be able to access it later. Click on the button at the left bottom corner of the dialog when you always see the name of the actual style. On the appearing library, click on the new button and in the dialog give the new style a name, Albus 1, and select the Zala Keramia folder because the new style is built up from Zala Keramia tiles. Now the name of the new style is visible on the button. To place the new tiling style, right click on one of the walls and delete all tiling. After that, right click on the bare wall and from the local menu, tiling, select and place tiling style, select the all walls option. In the appearing dialog, make sure that the right tiling style is active, then click OK. The program places the new style on all the walls. Let's create a mosaic tiling on the wall behind the shower. Navigate using the blue arrows to a perspective view where you can see the mentioned wall from the front. Right-click on the wall and select the Delete All Tiling option. Right-click on the bare wall and from the local menu Tiling, Tiling on Wall Side, select the On This Wall option. In the appearing dialog, switch to Mosaic Tiling. A mosaic can consist of four different materials at most. By clicking on the materials, you can select the ones you would like to create the mosaic from. With the sliders, you can set the ratio. When you are ready by clicking on the wall again and again, you can regenerate the mosaic to find the best one. The last step is to adjust the top of the mosaic tiling to the top of the ties. Right click on the wall and from the appearing menu, select the edit background area option. Move the cursor to the topmost edge and click once. Select offset and adjust the edge to the top of the ties. In this video, we would like to place mirrors on the wall behind the wash basins and on the other wall behind the dressing table opposite of the shower. To do so, you need to create 2D layouts. From the ribbon bar interior tab, tiling, select the tiling in 2D option. Click on the inner part of the wall you want to place a 2D layout of. You need to create a new background area. From the appearing options of the ribbon bar, select the Add option. Draw the area in the third row, two ties from the door, four ties from the floor. The mirror will be five ties wide and four ties high, including the small decor stripe. When you are ready with the new area, hit Enter. Select the material named white from the appearing material library. Let's place the mirror on the new area styling. From the ribbon bar, select the Add option. Select the just created area and from the material library, select the Mirror 03 material. Knowing the dimensions of the used tiles, you can easily calculate the dimensions of the mirror if you would like it to cover the area. In order to place the mirror as one piece, take the given row column option in the dialog.
Place the second mirror with the same method. Create a new background area in the third row, one tile from the door, four tile from the floor. The mirror is three tiles wide and four tiles high, including the small decor stripe. Choose the material named white as the color of the area. Then place the second mirror as a tile with the same settings, changing all its dimensions. After that, activate the 3D window to create a layout of the wall behind the bus because in order to get a right consignation at the end of the work, you need to extract the tiles behind the parapet wall of the toilet. Right click on the wall you would like to create a layout of. In the appearing menu, select the tiling on layout option. The program activates the 2D window. There, place the layout. You can edit and modify the already existing area on the layout by selecting the Edit option from the ribbon bar. After selecting the area, click on the edge and with the offset, move it four ties to the right towards the window. Do the same with the second row. In the third row, the parapet wall covers only the lowermost ties, so insert the node and move this edge towards the window. You can easily create layouts if you start the tiling in 2D command on the ribbon bar. You need to pay attention to click on the inner part of the wall in order to get a layout of the inside of the wall. With the Wall Elevation View tool on the ribbon bar, you can create wall elevations. Just click on a wall, move the orange arrow backwards and hit Enter. In the appearing dialog, click OK if you want to place it in the project or save it as a JPEG. You can move the wall elevation view anywhere. The last step of work is to create a tiling consignation from the tiles used in the bathroom. The consignation command can be found on the ribbon bar documentation tab quantity takeoff group. In the appearing dialog, select the tiling from the options. Finally, name the Excel file. Okay, and now I will show you how to do your homework in this bathroom design. But it's going to be a little bit different. Um, I'm going to show you how to put tiling inside if you choose a tile from internet. So now I'm going to show you how I pick one tile in the internet and I copy the picture of it in the program and I use that tile for tiling this bathroom. So first I'm going to tile the floor, I think. So this you will open the project I will send you. And this is some tile I will use. And with scissor tool, snipping tool in Windows, I hope you know it. I choose my tile so I mark where is it and I copy it. My tile is now, now copied. And right click on the floor, tiling, and then I can, I see that I, I must put material inside. So now I will create new material. And this new material will be my, um, my picture uh, from internet that I copied. 
then I change the dimensions of this tile. I save it. I can put a name of the tile also. And I must say, this is a material. This is not a tile. This is only the material. And I click OK. And then I go again. I pick tiling, tiling pool area. And then I pick the material of the new tile that I that I picked. So this is the material library. I find my um, my tiling, and this this will be okay. And I will now put these tiles on the floor. So I pick first position and second and the tiles out are done. So this our floor. The next step is wall tiling. So I do the same. I go to internet and I pick some tiles. I copy it. And then I save it as new material in my library, create new material, then paste it, paste it, change its dimensions. We want to um, keep the dimensions of the original tile, of course. I name it so I can find it easily in my library. I pick OK and then right click on the wall tiling tiling on wall side all walls and then i find my material my tile and i click okay and again i pick first point or here doesn't have to be, here doesn't have to be. So yeah, this is a very useful tool that I use all the time for creating tiles. And if you wanna do more detail uh, tiling, you can follow the tiling style as shown before. The next step in homework can be putting the mirror inside. You, you saw how, um, they showed us how to do mirror in 2D. You can also put it like in drag and drop from library. It's easier. And you can just copy it next to each other. Here you can see how I regulate 2D from 2D to 3D. Whatever I do in 2D also moves in 3D. And now I'm going to do wall elevations. And I'm going to do a technical drawing, not the one with colors, but with techni technical lines. So I choose the wall and the view. And here I choose the whole room, so I want all the drawings are shown. These are the technical drawings, uh, wall elevations of this room, and you can see that it is technical drawing. There are lines, not um, that it is not pixeled. So these drawings are created as a group. So if we want to change something in it, we must explode it. So I, I choose a drawing and explode it. And then I can fix lines if I want or change something. We can also export this, um, this drawing as DVG and um, I don't know, work it in AutoCAD if you like. like export, we, we go in file and export as DVG and we export it. The help of the kitchen design tool. You okay, we have now the second webinar. It's going to be kitchen, kitchen design. 
the help of the kitchen design tool, you can create complete kitchen layouts, which includes base cabinets, worktops, wall units and accessories. We will be using Andra Nights completed kitchen project, which for the moment does not include any cabinets. Open the project file. Before starting to work, it is recommended to save the project with another name. Click on the file menu, save project as command. Let's start by creating the base cabinet. Click on the ribbon bar interior KBB cabinet command. Set the following properties in the dialog. Click on the sizes tab. Set the depth to 550 mm. Lock the carcass height by pressing the padlock icon and then decrease space for legs to 100 mm. Click on the general unit door properties tab. Select the WS font family cabinet door family. Let's click on the default side properties tab. Select the WS front vertical side panel. After that, on the back tab, switch off the use side panel settings for back panels option and select WS back panel as the default back panel. On the top tab, select the top corpus panel as the default top panel. Click on the doors tab. First, add the new default door by pressing the green create button. On the handle tab, tick the use custom position option and select the top center handle position. Let's save the cabinet. Click on the save tab. For the category, choose kitchen. The subcategory is base cabinets. Finally, close the dialog by pressing the OK button. Place five copies of the cabinet on the drawing next to each other, beginning from the top right corner of the room. Press the escape button to close the command. In the next step, we modify the middle cabinet. Click on the cabinet and after that click on the pencil icon. In the dialog, select the door with Alt and click. Delete the selected door by clicking on the red X. Let's click on the Drawers tab. Select the multiple with single front type drawer and set the number of items to 3. Finally, insert the drawers by pressing the green Create button. Save the new cabinet. Click on the Save As button. You can leave the categories unchanged. Close the window by pressing the OK button. Let's create the new corner cabinet. Delete the cabinet in the wall corner. Click on the ribbon bar interior KBB cabinet command. In the dialog, click on the Save tab and load the previously saved base cabinet. Let's click on the Sizes tab and change the width to 1100 mm. Select the door with Alt and click and delete it by clicking on the red X button. On the Dividers tab, select the single vertical divider, take the All Division option, set the distance to the right side to 500 mm and then insert the division by pressing the green Create button. Click on the button in the right empty zone on the preview. Go to the Doors tab and then place the door by pressing the green Create button. On the Handle tab, take Use Custom Position option and select the top center handle position. Click on the button in the left empty zone on the preview. Select the fixed door and insert it by pressing the green Create button. Place the corner cabinet to the top right wall corner. Press the Escape button to close the command. Let's continue with creating a wide drawer cabinet. Click on the ribbon bar interior KBB cabinet command. Click on the Save tab and load the previously saved base cabinet. Let's click on the Sizes tab. Set the width to 800 mm. Select the drawer with Alt and click. 
change the type of the drawer to multiple width front and set the height of the first drawer to 150 mm. Close the dialog and place the white drawer cabinet to the wall on the right side next to the corner cabinet. Press the ASCII button to close the command. In the next step, we replace the base cabinet on the left side with a dishwasher. In the Design Center, navigate to Objects, Kitchen, Dishwashers. With the drag and drop method, drag the WS dishwasher object onto the cabinet on the left side. In the Appearing menu, select Replace Unit with same dimensions. Let's create the countertop. Click on the ribbon bar, interior, KBB, countertop, countertop by profile command and draw the reference line on the floor plan. When you are finished, press the Enter. In the dialog set the following properties. On the Sizes and Materials tab, choose the bright white material. Click on the Wall Strip tab. The section profile should be a rectangle. Set its height to 400 mm and its width to 10 mm. On the next tab for the material, choose the brown glass material. Let's click on the Sink tab. Select the sink called Single Ball Sink with Work Surface on left. Set the distance from the left side to 830 mm. Finally, insert the sink by clicking on the green Create button. Click on the Tab tab. Select the object named Tab and move it to the appropriate position. Rotate Z is plus 45 degrees, the offset left right is minus 140 mm and the offset front back is plus 80 mm. Click on the Hob Unit tab. Select the Induction Hob 580x510 model and select the distance from the left side to 1050 mm. Insert the Hob by clicking on the green Create button. Close the dialog by clicking on the OK button. Place a hood over the Hob. Search for the WS hood in the Design Center. Set its base offset from the floor to 1400 mm and place it on the floor plan over the cabinet with the drag and drop method. Press Escape button to close the command. The next step is to add high cabinets. Open the Objects Kitchen High Cabinets category in the Design Center. Place the WS roll front cabinet to the wall on the left side to the top left corner. After that, drag and drop the WS High Oven Cabinet, WS High Cabinet and WS High Fridge next to each other similarly. Finally, change the front doors of the High Cabinets. Open the Objects Kitchen Cabinet Doors category in the Design Center. Drag and drop the WS front white cabinet to the first high cabinet. Select Users Carcass Front in the appearing menu and then click on the other high cabinets to change their front doors as well. We will continue the work on the kitchen with placing plinth. Start the ribbon bar, interior, KBB, KBB plint by profile command and draw the reference line on the floor plan. When you are finished, hit enter. Move the plint to 50 mm closer to the walls. Click on the line and select the offset all command. Click on the new line and then click on the pencil icon. Set the reference point of the profile. Click on the cogwheel icon. Move the reference point to the bottom right corner of the rectangle. 
The height is 100 mm and the width is 20 mm. The material is the same that you used for the cabinet doors. Close the window by clicking on the OK button. Let's continue with editing of the 400 mm wide high cabinet. Click on the cabinet, after that click on the pencil icon. First, delete the bottom door. In the preview window, click on the bottom door with Alt and click. Once selected, you can delete it by clicking on the delete button. Let's add the shelf. Navigate to the dividers tab. The current empty zone is marked by a green outline on the preview. Now you can add a new divider to it. Select the single horizontal divider, set its position to 280 mm from top. Insert the new shelf by clicking on the green Create button. Stay on this tab. Navigate to the zone over the new shelf by clicking on the green icon in it. Set the position to 50% by using the slider. Insert the new shelf by clicking on the Create button. In the next tab, navigate into the upper zone over the new shelf by clicking on the green icon in it. Select the multiple vertical divider. Set the number of items to 2. Add the new divider by clicking on the green Create button. Do the same in the bottom empty zone. Let's add the drawer to the cabinet. Navigate into the bottom empty zone by clicking on the green icon in it. Go to the Drawers tab. Select the single with front drawer type. Click on the Drawer Object tab. Untick the Apply Default option to use a custom drawer. Select the narrow pull-out storage drawer. Click on the Object Properties button and modify the height of the object to 1100 mm. Close the window by pressing the OK. Add the new drawer by clicking on the Create button. With the help of the kitchen design tool, you can create complete kitchen layouts, which includes base cabinets, worktops, wall units and accessories. We will be using on the Okay. Now I will show you the homework for kitchen, for kitchen design. Uh, you will open this project. Um, so you can see that the room is already created. And I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to show you how you can create kitchen very fast with a help uh, of the tool auto layout. So we have got the room. And now, wait a minute. Here is the KVB tool. If you open it, you can find auto layout. And then I draw a line where my kitchen will show up. I draw and click enter. And then wait a little that computer can process. And then the program showed us an example how the kitchen layout can, can be done. So this is the kitchen and I can pick two of the um, auto layout kitchen, modern and standards, and I can create my own auto layout. So this, this time I choose modern cabinet and I click OK. I can see if I close up, I can see that this kitchen is not correct, but doesn't matter. I click OK and the kitchen shows up. And what I will do next, I will fix this kitchen in 3D. So I can see that the kitchen is 
in group is put together as a group. So I must explode it as well. So I will now do the right click on the kitchen. And ungroup it. And then the kitchen explodes. Some of the some of the objects objects change its position because of that. And now I delete objects, I change its dimensions, I put it somewhere else. Um, I create a kitchen as I want. This is a way you can do it very fast. So I'm, that's why I'm showing you. Uh, you can um, pick out a layout from KPB2 and you can create kitchen um, in very easy way by creating uh, auto layout and then just um, changing cabinets to its right position. This is good for some conceptual, conceptual um, projects if you need to design a kitchen very fast. So let's say that I am satisfied with my kitchen. This is how it looked like. I can see the molding is not right. I must finish it. So I do this on floor plan. I click on it and just add a node. I'm adding the node. And the next thing I will do, I will change the surfaces. So if I cl right click on the surface and choose fine material, uh, the material will show up on my design center and I can drag and drop it on the, on the surface. And also in my library material, I can find new, um, I can find another uh, surfaces material or add new materials. So this is how I create a kitchen very easily. And that's how I um, play around with surface a little more. I'm not going to show you all. And about the countertop, I click on the countertop and changing its um, changing its uh, elements on it. So I can put sink or move it around or uh, adding the water element. So I can do it like that by clicking OK. I choose it and click OK. And I can move it around in that setting also. So this is my kitchen. Now I'm going to play around a little bit more with layers because this project is already prepared. So. In this place, there, there is a table and chairs. If I go to layer option, I can see that a lot of layers aren't chosen. So I go first at floor plan and I choose, um, I choose all layers to be shown. And layers are shown only in floor plan. That's why I need to go in 3D and regenerate it. I can find the regenerate button on the hammer tool. And that's that. If you want, you can play around with rendering. Um, you can try out another tools in this project if you like. It's meant for um, learning. so enjoy with that. So that's it. 
This was the videos I want to show you. And now, okay, this is me again. And now I will show you also what I meant with homework. So you will open the project I will show you and use three detailing tool by uh, finding your own tile and create mirror or just, or just drag and drop it from library and create wall elevations. And for kitchen, you will open a project also and create auto layout kitchen uh, very easily. Or you can follow along the tutorial that we have seen together and um, this that way is more um, slow steps with auto layout you can do it a lot quicker so as you as you like and tomorrow we will do documentation so we will see a web webinar about that and if you have any questions please please write me um, tomorrow we will see um, how to do a mood board how to create snapshots uh, these are the color plans uh, how to do dimensions of the building, create signs, and how to do calculations of rooms, and how to put everything in a paper so you can print it out. Okay. So thank you for all for joining me today. Uh, if you have any questions, please you can let me know now or later in the email um so yeah or if you have any feedback um if you something if you find something that you don't like or like please let us know um and yes we are open to share the tutorials and webinars and create new educational uh, workshops so if you have any idea we are open to suggestions so please let us know um Yes, so if you have any questions, you can ask me now or we can um, talk on the email. Mm, by the way, some of you um, have asked me, have, have asked me um, how can you, if you can create a 3D model from DVG. Like if you, if someone sent you a DVG plan, if you can create a 3D model. And yes, I will show you that tomorrow a video how to create a 3D model house from a DVG existing plan. So yeah, um, I will see you tomorrow and thank you everybody to be here. Okay, bye-bye.